Hey, this is Alex Dia. I recently found myself in a situation where I had to capture credentials of somebody trying to log into an SSH server I controlled. Um, I didn't actually care about their being successful and being able to log in. I just wanted to present them with an SSH login and get the credentials. Um, now there's tons of honeypot projects out there that you can do. And if, if you're just interested in capturing credentials, I could you know, spin up a Docker container with one of those honeypots uh, and have a go at it. Uh, but I wanted to understand how, especially like the Python based ones, how they might work and how I might build this kind of thing myself. And uh, so this video is a walkthrough of that understanding. We're going to start with a listening socket and uh, build up the TCP stack all the way to the uh, application layer where we have strap on uh, SSH and have it handle as an SSH server, speak that protocol and log usernames and passwords. So uh, hopefully it'll be a fun time. Let's go ahead and dive in. All right, so we're going to start. I've got uh, VS Code open here and an empty file I've called honeypot.py. So we will start by adding our shebang, user bin emb python3. Uh, and then we're going to need, uh, we'll, go ahead and, we'll go ahead and under good practice here, make a main function. Um, and just for the sake of sanity here, we'll come down here and don't, we don't forget, if main equals main main. Okay, so we have a nice main thing here. Uh, in here, what are we gonna do? So we're gonna start building this uh, so uh, SSH server up from scratch. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna get a server socket. And so we'll see, we'll, we'll define this, we'll call it server sock. Uh, we can use, um, we're gonna need the, to import the socket library. Socket dot socket. And we're gonna do a socket dot AF underscore inet. And so this is telling it I want it to be an IP based socket. And then we can do socket dot doc stream. And so this is telling us we want a TCP socket. So now we have a TCP a T, IP TCP socket. Um, another thing we're going to do, so we're going to come in here and we're going to do set doc opt. And this is just like a common thing that we do on uh, sockets where we say at the socket level, so a sole sock. We want to set the, the option is socket so reuse address. And what that says is basically like, if I close this, I don't want the operating system to hold it in like a closed state listening for stray packets. I want it to immediately make it available so I can run it again. Um, and so that is going to need to be there. And now I'm going to bind this. So I'll do server sock.bind. And that takes a couple. We'll do that. And the first thing is the interface to listen on. So we're just going to give it the empty. That's going to be all interfaces. And then we need a port. I'm going to pick a high port here because I'm not running as root. And I want to be able to listen. So I'll pick 2222. And the last thing we need to do, so now we've got this, so this server socket list or bound to the port. We want to listen on that port. And what this says is uh, you pick an arbitrary number of how, how, much you want to, how much you want to be able to queue for um, accepting. And so I pick an arbitrary number. Some people just do 100. I'll put 223 DF, um, and uh, we've got that there. Now, this doesn't actually do anything now, but we can run it. Um, if we hit F5, let's see, we will do a Python file. And let's see, does this run? It runs and it immediately exits. Um, let's, just for the sake of demonstration, we'll say input like this, and that should, uh, that'll pause waiting for me to input something. So let's try again. Now it hangs. Awesome. Let's create a separate terminal over here. Uh, it's going to get pretty tight. Over, it's going to get kind of tight over here, but let's see if we can probably shrink this. Um, if we do a net stat minus TNLP grep 222, we can see my host is listening on port 2222 right now. So we have something listening. Um, if we come over here and we click enter, yeah, we, so now that fulfills the input and we finish out the function, finishes out and we're done. Um, so listening on its own doesn't do a whole lot. Let me run this again. Um, and this time we can, we can try to connect to it, right? So uh, 127.0.0.1, port 222. And, uh, you know, there's, no, there's nothing here. It's not doing anything. Um, and what's happening right now is my netcat process has sent out a packet to localhost, but still a packet's gone out, TCP packet's gone out to port 222. We would see if we looked on Wireshark, the uh, three-way handshake, I believe the three-way handshake's already started. Um, although that might be part of the accept call. I don't, don't, not positive on that. Um, but we're able to start the connection, but then there's nothing to actually accept this socket and do anything with it. So we will, uh, we will do that next. Uh, let's see, we can stop this, make this a little bigger. Um, so instead of 
stop pausing for input, what we're going to do now is we're going to say client sock client address is equal to server sock dot accept. And so accept says, hey, go check the queue, anything that's trying to connect to me and establish that connection, return to me a different socket so that the listener can keep listening um, and the address of the client connecting. So with that, we can do a print uh, connection from client address. And this is actually a tuple, it's the IP end port. So we can do it like this, client address one like that. That'll look pretty good. Um, we can also write to this socket. So we can say like client sock dot send uh, hello, new line like that. And we can read off of it. So we can say print client sock dot receive. Uh, we'll receive 256 bytes. We'll decode that so it prints nice. And uh, yeah, let's try that. Let's give that a run. So we've run that again. Um, over here in our terminal, we can see we are listening. And this time, if we connect to it, right away, we get hello back. Um, and so here's hello, and we can say like, hi there. And we send that. And you can see hi there actually shows up back over here where the program's running. So we printed that out. Um, so, and here's our connection from localhost on some high port. So we've, at this point, we've built a TCP socket. Um, now that's, that's a long way from getting us to an SSH server, um, but we're making progress, right? Um, now we don't want, we want to build an SSH server and we don't really want to write all of that ourselves. Um, but this is the brilliance of how like the internet has been constructed in the model of TCP IP is that we just have this TCP IP socket and we can pass it up to a higher level library that's going to handle the SSH stuff. Um, so we're going to use a library called Paraminko. I don't know if I'm saying that right, but uh, something like that, para, M-I-K-O, like this. Um, you probably, have, you might have to pip install that if you don't have it on your client already. Um, and so we're gonna get rid of this uh, sending random stuff. And instead, what we're gonna do is we're gonna say transport is equal to paramico.transport, and we need to pass it the sock. So what we're saying here basically is like, hey, paramico, take this socket that just established a three-way handshake, and now you use that to run an SSH server. There's a few other things we're gonna have to do to get that started. So we'll need a server key. Um, SSH servers just have to have a key. So we, we can use Paramico to generate that, uh, dot RSA key like that, dot generate, and we'll do 2048, seems like a good number. Uh, and then we need to do transport dot add, uh, not add, add server key. And pass it server key. Yeah, so now we have a key. Uh, and then we are going to need some kind of um, SSH server defined. So we've got this transport object. Um, I'm going to do something that you're not supposed to do and it's not going to work, but we can do, um, Paramico defines this thing called a server interface. And an interface class is like um, partially defined or like really straw man, but it's not meant to actually be used. It's meant to be imported into some other class and then the functions redefined over it. Um, but we're just going to actually use the raw interface right now. So we'll do transport.start start server, and we need to pass it uh, server equals SSH. So now we're passing it this server interface object. Um, so let's like, we'll, we'll give it a try. Let's see. So if we come over here and we F5 to run this again, so now we're running and listening. Um, if we connect to this, we, we get back the SSH banner here. We're actually connecting with SSH and we are seeing that this is the uh, Paraminko 3.1.0. Um, we can see our connection over here from this print string. So we're getting a little bit something there, but we aren't getting any, um, oh, well, so that's netcat. So we didn't get much there. Um, and then we had an error reading this banner. So let's try again. Let's, this time we can do um, SSH uh, localhost minus P222. And we can connect. Um, see, we might need to restart here. Uh, connect. And it kind of just dies. Like there's not much going on here. Um, and that's because the functions you need to define, it handles a lot of the like, handling the basic things, but you still have to define functions. And we're going to do that in a minute. Um, we can try, you know, we can, oops, let's see, we'll F5 to start this again. Um, another thing that's kind of annoying is if you connect here, see how we even, so now we're actually, so this is actually a different error. Um, maybe the error we're getting above actually, um, skip through this. So SSH, when I SSH to a server, my client writes down the server public key for that uh, server, and it stores that. 
And the reason it does that is because it doesn't want, if I ever get uh, man in the middle somehow so that I think I'm talking to, let's say GitHub, but really I'm talking to an attacker server, um, my SSH client's gonna say, hey, you, you know, said you wanted to SSH to localhost, but this key changed. And I'm surprised by that. It shouldn't change. It should be the same every time. Um, and so I'm not even gonna let you connect. Um, and the only way you can connect is if you come here and you run SSH keygen to remove this entry from where it's being stored. Um, so we do that. And now if we let you connect, we, we, we let you connect. Um, and now we've re-recorded that new key. So now the next time I try to connect, um, oh, I guess connection refused. Oh, cause it's not even running. Try it again. Uh, oh, so now we're here, we actually have it asking me for my password. Um, no, no, whatever I type in, it doesn't work. It fails. Um, but you know, we're making progress down the line here. Um, but again, this is what I was trying to show earlier. Now, if I try to connect, oops, F5. Uh, now if I try to connect, uh, I get the key is bad again. Um, so we're going to take a break right here. We're going to, so we're going to come back to this and actually not use this as a server interface, but define our own server and put the functions we need in place. Uh, but before we do that, I'm going to do some like basic quality of life stuff that you're seeing me kind of fumble through here. Um, the first thing I want to do is I want to make sure, I don't want to generate this key every time. Um, so let's come here and we'll do SSH key gen. Uh, we can just do that. We can take the default. We're going to call it like key right in this directory, no password. And so now we have next to honeypot.py, we have key. Um, and then let's just go up here and we can say, um, oh, actually not down here. We can, let's see, where's our server key? We will comment this out and we will say server key equals paramico.rsa key.from private key file and we'll call it key. And so now, let's see, if we run this with F5, now we're going to go ahead and clear out our previous um, key fingerprint because, and if we now go to connect, we get a password thing and it fails. And if we connect again, um, oops, if we run it again and we connect again, we get a password thing. So we're not getting that problem anymore, but that's because the key is the same. So we've logged the fingerprint for it and we're just getting the same one over and over again. So SSH isn't scared by that. Um, next thing we want to do quality of life wise is I, I don't like restarting this every time, right? So what we're going to really do is wrap this in like a while true loop. So we'll come here and we'll say while true, I'm going to listen for, I'm going to, going to get my accept, uh, my accept, I'm going to start the server. And then when that's done, I'm going to loop right around and be ready to accept the next one. Um, and so now I run this once and I can connect a localhost fail a few times. I can connect the localhost again and fail a few times. And, you know, you can see I'm keep, I'm making new connections here each time with a different port, but it, you know, it's allowing me to, I don't have to restart this program. So that, that's, quality of life, right? Um, the last thing we can do, and this isn't at all necessary for what I'm trying to do at this moment, which is to create this SSH honeypot that just logs credentials and then tells them that they failed. Um, but if I wanted to do anything more serious, I would want to create a thread. And so what I'd want to do here is come down here and say, um, def handle connection. And I'm going to need like the client doc and we'll see, we'll say like the so uh, we'll call it SSH, that's what we call it below. And we'll take all of this stuff right here. And we will say T equals threading dot thread, target equals handle connection, args equals, and I already forgot what my, what are my args? It's gonna be uh, client doc comma, I guess that's it really. Let's just do client sock. We'll come up here. We don't need the SSH yet. And now if we come in here and put this. So now we have, uh, skip that over. We will, for each client connection, rather than waiting for that connection to finish and then going back and accepting, now we're going to say, as soon as something connects, we're going to print that there's a connection. We're going to start a thread to handle that connection. And we're going to write back to accepting. So that hypothetically two clients can connect at the same time. Um, so let's run this again, and it shouldn't be noticeably different here, but we can at least just verify it's still working. Um, interestingly enough, it is not. Let's see, where did I make a mistake? Could have errors in the thread for sure. Oh, I'm not starting the thread. It helps if you start the thread. So uh, p dot start. I believe that's how you call it. Um, 
always fun to watch me do it live and do something silly. Um, let's see what we got here. Stop that run, Mars. Must be an iterable, not a socket. Um, I wonder if I need something like, do I need to make this a tuple? Um, probably didn't need that. Let's try here. Rerun. Connect. Ooh, and we hit my threat. We hit my debug point. Okay. Let's just run, take that down. Um, check this again. And I'm back to where I was. Okay. Uh, so I can connect and I can fail logging in. Um, so we're now working in a threaded way. That's that's neat. If we ever wanted to deploy this somewhere public, we'd want people to be able to connect to it multiple ways. So um, now let's get back to making the server. So we're going to come here and we'll say um, class SSH server. And then we're going to subclass the Paraminko uh, server interface. And so that's going to handle a lot of stuff, right? It's going to handle working through what functions need to be called when. I'm just going to need to define some of the functions. And so we're really going to get away with only defining one of them. And that's called check auth password. Boom. And uh, VS Code is nice enough to say, I, I know what that function is supposed to be defined as because I know what a server interface looks like. So it gives me all this right away. Um, I don't want this return thing here. What I want to do is I want to print uh, username, comma, I'm going to do colon, password, like that. And thank you for this hints. Is that working? And then I want to return paraminko dot auth failed. Not sure why it's not autofilling, but basically, no matter what you type, we're just going to return fail. Um, so now if we run this, let's restart our server. We come here and we do, and we type password, uh, password. Oh, uh, we didn't actually send. So we're still making a Paraminko server interface here. So instead, what we're going to do is we're going to make SSH server that. Now, when we run this, there's that. Connect back. Uh, password, please subscribe. And you can see over here, it's getting logged. So we're actually, whatever attempt I'm typing in, I'm getting the passwords out. Um, we could, this, if we wanted to keep developing, this, this, this meets the needs of what I had and why I started doing this. So I'm gonna cut the video here. But if you wanted to keep going with this, there are other things you can define here. So you can set up, okay, what does it mean to create a session? What does it mean to take commands off, you know, take commands or text that's sent over that session? How do you respond? Um, you know, you typically think of SSH as I run commands on the shell, but you don't have to. I can do anything I want here. I can program to my heart's content. So there's a handful of these functions that are specified by the server interface class that if you then uh, define them, that you can actually start to build this server in such a way that it interacts with an SSH client. So um, again, I got what I needed here. Uh, so I'm going to call it here. But, uh, you know, if you have ideas on how you can implement this and grow it bigger, you know, the world is your oyster. So... Um, thanks for hanging out with me today. I appreciate you hanging around till the end, and uh, I'll talk to you next time. Bye.